Why are there so many songs about rainbows? And what's on the other side? Rainbows are visions, but only illusions. And rainbows have nothing to hide. So we've been told, and some choose to believe it. I know they're wrong, wait and see. When I was little, my father was famous. He was the greatest samurai in Hey everybody, the a few weeks ago, I put up a video asking about rainbows, specifically about rainbows and the supposed dome over the flat earth. You see, there are some people that believe rainbows are evidence of the dome of the flat earth. I know, doesn't make any sense to me either. So I thought I had made a very simple request. Please explain the path that light travels in the creation and viewing of a rainbow from the sun to the viewer and how the dome is involved. Yet, it was a task that was too difficult for them, it seemed. The closest I got to an answer was from Bill Veal, who claimed for both scenarios I gave that sunlight left the sun, uh, reflected off the dome at a point in line with spots A and B, came back past point A, the sun, went to point B and then to point C where it is seen which is an interesting claim because it's no different from my ABC path, except that it's added a unknown factor, making it a textbook example of failing Occam's razor. Occam's razor says, all things being considered equally valid, you should pursue the explanation with the fewest unknown factors. And here, Bill has added a dome at an unknown distance with unknown reflectivity properties. Because understand, in this scenario, the sun's rays are coming right back along their path, which according to the way light works, uh, means the dome would be at a 90 degree angle to the path of the light ray. That's just how reflections work. So unless there are flat facets on the dome bouncing light back perfectly, then the dome must have some magical properties that allows it to direct the reflection right back at the source. Bill doesn't speak to how this works, but he's adamant that there must be a reflector behind the source in order for a rainbow to happen. And then there's Fred Montgomery, who thinks that diagrams are dumb, who just repeated over and over with increasing levels of vitriol that you need to have uh, a reflective surface that will reflect and or polarize the light, in addition to the light source and the water. And both of these men insisted over and over again that making a rainbow indoors was impossible. And Fred was particularly adamant that what I needed to do was shut the fuck up and make a rainbow indoors, and since I'm too much of a coward to admit that it's impossible, I should just shut the fuck up, period. Okay, full disclosure, I had written out this part of the script before I went into the uh, surgery on the 21st, but I recently found out that Fred Montgomery had put up a video on the 21st explaining his position in a bit more detail, and I'll be referencing some of it here. So a big shout out to Pride Month for pasting multiple links to Fred's video on my comment threads. Pride Month is almost up, and I hope you and yours have had a great month of pride. It was the fact that rainbows are so prominent and front and center because of Pride Month that I decided to put this series of videos together. So, happy Pride to all of those out there who are celebrating it, especially you, Pride Month. Now, in his video, Fred doesn't go into much more detail, but I have to give respect to the guy because unlike most science deniers who write dumb shit in the comments, Fred at least is willing to put his face on camera and say things that show how ignorant he truly is, and he doesn't just write moronic things in the comments anonymously. And you gotta admire the self-confidence of the ignorant. So here's the thing. Most of you know that I work in the legal business. There's a basic rule in the courtroom that you don't ask a question that you don't already know the answer to. And so when I made that video and asked that question, I knew what the response would be. An indoor rainbow is impossible. I challenge you to do it. You won't. You can't. You're a coward for not trying. 
And that's why at the end of the video, just before my outro kicks in, I did this. It's a gorgeous day. That's my did you see it? For one frame, this appeared on screen. The universal symbol for, it's a trap. Do you think I hadn't already made a rainbow indoors before I made the video? Do you not know me? So that's coming near the end. But before I do that, I want to address the confusion that some people have as to the reason that your standard sunlight rainbows have the shape that they do. You have your people like Fred, who claim the rainbow is circular because the dome is spherical. For the rainbow to be circular, because rainbows are circles, right? The dome would have to be spherical because spherical objects cast circular reflections. Another fact of science, Jerry. Okay. But then you have people like uh, a man like me who wants to know if the rainbow is reflecting off something physical. He wonders if the angle of the sun is involved, shouldn't the rainbow just be a big wall of rainbow? And he wonders if the wind blowing would make it wavy. He admits his ignorance of this topic and thus these are perfectly valid questions, though he also admits that the answers don't matter to him because God did it and that's enough for him. But for those of you that do think that the answers matter, here's some more information. What are the rainbows reflecting off of? Is it something physical? Yes, it is. It's droplets of water, rain, fog, or mist. Contrary to how we draw them in cartoons and contrary to what Fred claims in his video. Why is it bullshit? Jerry, for one, rain doesn't fall in spheres. So that should negate your whole diet. Raindrops and mist are actually little spheres. Not perfect, but pretty close. Slow motion video of raindrops and mist show this to be true. Especially when the water particle is small enough to be considered aerosolized, such as mist and fog. The surface tension of the particle has a great deal of influence on the shape and balancing that surface tension pulls the water particle into a sphere. That's just a fact. And while most light will go right through the droplets or reflect off the surface, a small percentage of the light will hit the droplet at the perfect angle and will be refracted and reflected internally within the droplet. And it's this internal reflection that needs to be emulated when making a rainbow in, say, a, a bowl of water indoors. Since the bowl isn't a small particle of water that has formed a tiny sphere, that internal reflection isn't happening. So they have to put a mirror in the bowl in order to reflect the light back through the water and maximize the refraction. So when Fred asked in his video, if the physicists who know so much more than he and I do say you need a reflective surface uh, in, when you're making it indoors, what's the reflective surface you need when making it outdoors? Every single science guy who is smarter than me and you, Jerry, who tells kids how to make rainbows, who writes instructions down, will tell you you need another reflective surface to make the rainbow. Now, if rainbows are, are to share the same characteristics and principles that, that outside and the ones I make indoors share the same principles and characteristics, then tell me, Jerry, if I need a secondary reflective surface to make a rainbow indoors, What's the, what's the, what's the, the, the added reflective surface outside to see a rainbow? It's a sensible question. First, I'll add, they don't say you must have a solid reflective surface. That just happens to be the state common mirrors come in. They're solid. The reflective surface when outside with the sun is the interior of the water droplets. No need for a dome. Fred also asked if the rainbow is coming off each little droplet of water, why we don't see a million rainbows. So when you see a rainbow outside, Jerry, you see the rain, why isn't there a million rainbows for every single raindrop? If you show your one diagram with the light going in and all the colors of the rainbow coming out the other side of the, coming back out of it. And that's kind of related to a man like me's question of why isn't there just a big wall of rainbow? These questions make sense, but they are based in their lack of understanding of how light travels and how vision works. After the internal reflection and refraction in the droplet, light in the red spectrum will bounce back at 42 degrees from the original light path. The violet light at 40 degrees and the other 
colors in the, of the spectrum will fall in that range in between. We only see the colors when our eye is within that 40 to 42 degree angle. Say there is a droplet falling with a bright sun behind us. There is a red light bouncing off of that droplet at 42 degrees and a violet light at 40 degrees. But we can't see those unique colors because our eyes are not at that angle yet. We still might see the particle of water because other light is bouncing off of it towards us, but we're not seeing that unique refraction from the sun. As the particle drops, it gets to the point where our eyes are at 42 degrees, and we see that red color. Just the red, not the whole rainbow, just the red on the one particle. And as it falls, it turns orange and yellow until finally at 40 degrees from us, it turns violet. This particle of water itself doesn't give us the rainbow. It's just a pixel of light at a certain location. When it's here, it's red. When it's here, it's orange, here yellow, and so on, until here where it's violet. It's when we have a whole bunch of particles across this entire area that we actually see a rainbow. All the particles along here show red. All the particles along here show orange. If the particles move down or side to side due to wind, the rainbow itself doesn't move because it's not real. It's just light that is seen when water particles are at specific locations. And that brings us to why rainbows are circles or segments of a circle. And that's because of that 40 to 42 degree restriction. Here, let me show you. We draw a straight line from the sun through the eye of the observer. The red light will be seen at 42 degrees from that line. I know I mentioned earlier that the light was 42 degrees from the source light ray up here, but since the line through the eye and the line traced by the initial ray are parallel, we all know that if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the alternate interior angles formed are the same, right? Right. So. 42 and 42. Now, 42 degrees is not just at this point from the line, but it's also at this point here, and this here, and all the points along this traced out imaginary circle. All these points are 42 degrees from this line. And so the shape of the rainbow has nothing to do with the shape of an unknown and unproven dome, but is purely the result of the geometry of light refraction. Okay, so now let's get to making a rainbow indoors which I have to say is not an easy thing to do. Well, it's kind of easy, but the hard part is dealing with all the wiggle room that science deniers will look for to undermine your demonstration. For example, it was pretty easy for me to block out all the light going into my bathroom and let a sunbeam come in through a hole and make a rainbow appear. But science deniers will just say that the dome is on the other side of that sun doing whatever magic it does, and it's making the rainbow possible. And then Fred says, just take a flashlight, but a flashlight has a little reflector behind it, and they'll just say that that's taking place of the dome, right? You know they will. So then I need to use a naked bulb, but I can't use LED bulbs, which is mostly what I have, because they don't have the full spectrum of light. They may look white, but most of them are blue LEDs with a yellow filter, so you don't get the full rainbow out of them. No, what you need is a classic incandescent bulb of high wattage. High wattage because I want the room to be dark, so I'm going to block off most of the light, but I want the light that I do use to be bright enough to be effective. So I have this 200 watt incandescent bulb that gets hot, and I surround this bulb in a cage of black foam core with a hole to let the light out in one direction. I'm in my carpeted office with blankets on the floor. Someone else had made an indoor rainbow, but a pool of water had collected on the floor, and Fred claimed that that water was acting as a second reflector. So there's no reflective surface here. The shades have been drawn, but it's not even sunrise yet. So the only light source will be this bulb. I have a spray bottle to aerosolize some water. Okay, I'll turn on the bulb, cover it up, and get to spraying as quickly as possible because I don't want this foam core catching fire. Here we go.
And there it is, the spectra of visible light being refracted using only a light bulb and water. A rainbow being made indoors. What some of these people have claimed is absolutely impossible to do. Fred Montgomery calls himself the, the rainbow guy. In other words, he's staked his reputation on BS that wasn't based in facts. The claim from science deniers is that creating a rainbow indoors using only water and light is impossible. Because when creating a rainbow outside, you need a light source, the, the sun, water, and some type of reflective polarizing surface, like the dome. The claim is that if mainstream science is correct about how rainbows are formed with just light and water, then it should be possible to do so indoors with just a light source and a spray bottle of water. I just showed that it can be done. Now, you may have noticed that I have referred to these uh, in opposition on this circumstance as science deniers and not just your standard globe deniers. And that's because they have gone beyond just denying the existence of the globe to denying broader known facts learned through scientific study and observations. They deny what science has told us about the way light is refracted and reflected in water. So you're telling me light could go through one side of the raindrop and then just say, oh, shit, I went through one side. Let me just reverse and back out and reflect out. Just no, 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 Jerry. The reflection does not come from the water. They deny the shape of water in droplets. Rain doesn't fall in spheres. So that should negate your whole diagram, right? Because you always show a big circle ball and talking about it's a raindrop. Rain doesn't fall in spheres. They deny what we know about the sun. The sun is a light. We don't know what the sun is. Don't know how far away it is. None of that, Jerry. It's not a ball of gas and helium like you believe it is because you read it in a book. Even denying that the sun is its own light source. The sun is a light. The source of the sun that's making the light for the moon, the sun, the stars. Nobody knows where the fuck it is. We don't know how it works. The existence of rainbows is another one of those very odd positions that some flat earthers have taken, like moonlight being cold. That is incredibly silly and wholly unnecessary, except for the fact that they need to deny that the sun is and does what science has learned about it. That's it. It's just about denying the science of the sun. And if rainbows work the way science claims they do, then rainbows don't need a dome. Making a rainbow indoors with no dome substitute would be evidence that their dome rainbow claim has no factual basis, even though we all know that they just made up the dome. Even now, one of them is thinking about writing in the comments <laughs> that, uh, that there was a metal doorknob in the room acting as a reflective surface or the, 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 the lens of the camera, the, the glass of the bulb itself, or even my sparkling eyes act as, as a reflector. And when they do, just shake your head because they are sad, sad people. Except for Fred Montgomery. Fred has been focusing on rainbows for years. He's come at me with different usernames, but at all times with increasing levels of foul mouth rudeness hell-bent on this idea of indoor rainbows being impossible. Fred is a small-minded, petty, angry, and ignorant human being who put way too much of his social value into this rainbow argument. And because of this video, can now be deemed utterly worthless. Fred. Consider yourself dismissed. That's my job! That's what I do! I don't lose! I win! I win! Is there no one on this planet to even challenge me? Maybe you came by to congratulate me on last night's victory. Someday we'll find it. The rainbow connection. The lovers, the dreamers, and me.